Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster of the day. Thank you, honored Toastmasters. And thank you, esteemed guests. <laughs> <laughs> Toastmasters, I am so excited to share this information with you because when you're sitting in a funeral home across from a funeral director, he will not mention to you that it is legal, perfectly legal, in all but seven states of our country to bury your dead on your private property, even in Illinois. You can call Springfield, you get a permit for a family cemetery. Oh. He, will, he will not mention to you that you can purchase a casket online. He will not say it's a lot cheaper to buy one from Amazon, Costco, even Walmart sells them online and they can be delivered overnight to you. <laughs> I know that a funeral director will never mention to you to skip the embalming and hire a deaf midwife to assist you at home washing and dressing your deceased. Now, I thought you'd be feeling a little squeamish for you <laughs> to hear this, but you're not. But I get it. If you are squeamish about death and dying and burial, we're Americans. And we are hands off. Hands off when it comes to aging, when it comes to disease, when it comes to death and dying and especially burial. We don't want anything to do with that. We look the other way. In fact, our tradition of death and burial in the United States is one of denial. Isn't that sad? We deny the end is even upon you. And Ron, you're shaking your head. That's great. So today I want to give you a brief history of why our culture is like that. I will compare our culture to two other countries. Environmentally, what is the cost? Environmentally, what does this embalming do and cremation do to our environment? And the last, of course, which I forgot, what the future holds for us. So a brief history. How have we, as a nation, become so reliant on the funeral industry? One word, embalming. And during the Civil War, the embalmer went to the battlefields, and he set up his embalming table on the battlefield. And he was able, he was able to offer dead soldiers' families back north, up north, um, the availability of uh, sending, embalming the body and sending the body back up north. And, and embalming does preserve the body somewhat. Refrigeration had not yet been invented, but the families were able to uh, get their dead back and bury them in their home cemeteries. And of course, in the Civil War also, photography was brand new. And the photos that were on every newspaper of every city of Abraham Lincoln's corpse sealed the deal. Embalming is the way to go. Because look at Abe. He looks like he's asleep. He doesn't look like he's dead. It leaves a beautiful corpse for a short time. So voila. The embalming has caused the modern funeral industry in America to become as huge as it is. Embalming became the practice that every up-and-coming family wanted for their dead. But please know, embalming is not a beautiful, uh, loving, <coughs> loving practice. In fact, it is brutal and invasive. And it is totally unnecessary. You don't need to embalm. Decomposition happens whether a body is embalmed or not. Embalming is the practice of leaving a beautiful corpse for a very short time. Actually, it's done for cosmetic reasons only. Yes, you heard me, cosmetic reasons only. So yes, we may be squeamish and in denial about death and burial because we let others take care of our dead. In fact, we outsource burial. We outsource end of life. Now in other countries, Muslim countries, they do not embalm, it's against the law. Instead, loving family members will sit shoulder to shoulder in a shallow pool with the deceased corpse on their laps and they lovingly wash the corpse nine times. Nine times they wash it and they anoint it with essential oils and it's buried within 24 hours. The corpse is buried right away in a simple shroud. This is definitely hands-on and it's a high honor in Muslim countries to do this to your death. Now Japan Japan cremates 99% of their dead, but it's a family affair. The family goes to the crematorium. They make a ceremony of 
turning on the crematorium oven. They bring food and they feast in an adjoining room. They wait until the uh, bones have cooled and the bones are brought to them and the bone picking ceremony begins. The family will examine all the bones. They will look at the possible injuries to the femur or this is dad's when he was hit on the head with that storm door or whatever. They lovingly hold the bones and decide which ones to bring home or which ones to have um, pulverized and put in with the ashes. So again, it's very hands-on in other countries. Sounds very alarming to us, and I gave you two <laughs> very gentle uh, examples. But every other country handles their dead differently than we do. In fact, America and Canada embalm and cremate more people than the entire world combined. So, what does this do to our environment? I ask you, it can't be good, can it? So a typical uh, cemetery in the United States is just 10 acres. And in that 10 acres will contain 1,000 tons of casket wood, 20,000 tons of concrete from the burial vaults, and enough casket wood, wood to build 40 homes. And nationwide, there are 800,000 gallons of formaldehyde poison that are buried every year in U.S. cemeteries. So we are literally littering our earth with our dead. Now today, uh, cremations are a ca uh, cause of concern too. In fact, 50% uh, of all our dead are now cremated. So cremation is really growing in popularity and embalming is going down. But still, that's a concern because of chemical combustion, vaporization, and oxidation because <laughs> those fumes have to go up and out into the air. And you can imagine in large cities like Los Angeles, or New York or Chicago, those crematoriums are burning cadavers all day long. And it's being released into the air. So what does the future hold? Well, our mindset is changing. However slowly, it is changing. There are choices now. Maybe you've heard of the concept of a green burial or possibly an eco-friendly funeral. There's an infinity burial suit that you can purchase. And it's the subject of a great TED talk if you're interested. And it consists of mushroom spores. And you dress your dead in this suit of mushroom spores. And it, it results in fresh compost. Um, there's also a biodegradable pod, which I like. And the washed and oiled and naked uh, corpse is put into this pod in a fetal position. And it's buried in this pod. And uh, a tree is planted, the choice of the, a tree, a choice of the deceased uh, choice is planted above. But to bring about change, we really need to talk about it. We really need to bring it out of the shadows. And that's kind of what I'm doing today. There are death clubs springing up all over the United States and Canada where they talk about this on a regular basis and all that can be done and all the things that a funeral home director will not tell you they talk about. So my information today comes from a book called Smoke Gets In My Eyes by Caitlin Doughty. She was a crematorium worker in Los Angeles. She knows exactly what she's talking about. So talk about this with your loved one before you are sitting in a funeral home and the funeral director is selling you the high-end rosewood casket or possibly the orthopedic shoes with pillow soles for grandma because, of course, she deserves it. Finally, one day, <coughs> we may be walking in sacred forests sacred forest with 100 feet trees, 100 foot trees that are nourished by the compost of our dead. So just as we have lived on the flora and fauna of the earth our entire lives, maybe one day we will gladly give back to the flora and fauna with our burial. Thank you.